Welcome back to another episode of the Inside Lines podcast. I'm your host, Atoya Burleson. And I am Tia April. Coming up a bit later in the show, we'll be chatting with Erica Donald, marketing manager and wife to Super Bowl champ, Aaron Donald of the Los Angeles Rams. We'll also be getting into our hot take this week, where we'll be discussing the controversy release of Drake's new album. But first, what's going on, Tia? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Listen, I feel like... I'm good. I feel like we haven't talked in so long, and it was just two days ago. I know. Just a lot took place in the last two days. Girl, <laughs> it's never ending. Uh, it is. And, you know, I think I told y'all last week or the week before, it's like the light switch came on here in Seattle mm-hmm. and fall turned on because mm-hmm. it was still summer for hella long. And um, so it's been like cold and dreary and just, I don't know, everybody's been like super tired and exhausted. But um. God, last night I surprised myself and went to a Post Malone concert. What? And? I know, right? <laughs> Do and you I tell? had a good time. You did. I had a really good time. So first, um, Roddy Rich opened up for him. Okay. And I was like, oh, I know like a couple songs. And then once he got going, I'm like, oh, I know all these songs. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, I, I mean, I loved his performance. And then Post Malone, it was, he's not like a... Um, the greatest performer in terms of like mm-hmm. you're not gonna get this theatrical show. You're gonna get some lights, some pyro, right? You know, the typical, a little bit whatever. He's mm-hmm. gonna walk back and forth, right? But one, he like he, he is so passionate about being up there, and you can tell, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And he was just super excited. But I also noticed that my old ass was like one of the oldest people in the building. <laughs> honey. It was all kids. It was all kids in there, okay? Yes. <laughs> it is definitely different. You realize at some point, like, life has went by and you still think you're young until you see other kids. Uh-huh. You're like, what in Exactly. The world? Yes. <laughs> we are those people now. We the old folks up in the clubs or in the at the concerts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, goodness gracious. It was literally like a whole high school football team in a suite right next to ours. And we were like, hmm. This may not be for us, but right. we had a good time, though. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm glad you had a good time. That's all that matters. Forget about that. As long as you had a good time, that's all that Look. matters. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I know you had a busy weekend as well. Yeah, it was definitely busy. Nate's uh, parents are in town. Um, the boys also had their mm-hmm. playoff game on Friday, which went well. They won, which was great. Um, nice. Yeah, so nice they time. play on at home next uh, or this Friday coming up. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, playoffs is, is very... It's definitely different, you know. It's intense, um, it's intense, but yeah. in a good way. So happy for them. And then I just had a busy weekend. Hold on, how many more? Uh, how many more games before they get to state? Uh, so there's this one, the following one, and then I think there. I think they have a break, a Thanksgiving break, and then they play the weekend after for state, which is weird. They usually do it that if Saturday they, okay. after Thanksgiving, but they pushed yeah. it to December, which I'm not looking forward to because it's going to be freezing here. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, they don't have, oh, they do have it at the stadium, but the stadium's outdoor. Yes, everything's outdoor here. There is no indoor anything, which makes zero sense, but, you know. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yes. Um, And then you said, what else you had? Um, I just had just a busy weekend. I had a couple um, events, and then I had a friend's surprise 40th. So when when I say I got home last night and I crashed, (laughs) I so needed that extra hour. I needed that extra hour for mm-hmm. daylight saving, so I'm grateful for that. So, um, yeah, everything everything was good, but uh, definitely realize I'm getting older. I can't I can't bounce back like I used to. Hang like that no more. <laughs> you know what? I did forget about daylight savings mm-hmm. time, and even um, Cliff rem- he reminded me before we went to sleep uh, after the concert. But when I woke up, it was five thirty. I'm like, damn, I couldn't even sleep in, <laughs> but I did because it did. was really six thirty. Exactly. So, yeah, it, it definitely was busy. I'm so grateful to be done and relax. And um, I'm excited about our guests we're about to have on. Not yet. But before yeah, we talk about amazing. that, let's get into this week's hot take. All right, it's time for this week's hot take. Tia, what you got? Okay, so before we dive into the, our hot take and speaking about Drake, I want to update or mention a few things okay. um, from some stories we talked about before. Okay. So 
long time ago, sometime during season three, we talked about um, former assistant coach of the San Fr- or excuse, I said San Francisco, Kansas City Chiefs, yes. um, Andy Reid's son, Britt. Britt Reid, yes. So I don't know if you, so you remember when they were the week of Super Bowl. Yes. Um, Super Bowl when they were playing in Tampa. Brett got into a car accident. He was driving under the influence, ran into two vehicles that were stopped on the side of the road on the exit ramp to the Arrowwood Stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a little girl that was in the car uh, suffered severe brain damage, mm-hmm. things of that nature. Well, Brett was sentenced to three years in prison for his um, DWI, and um, but the prosecutors wanted four. a total of four, mm-hmm. but this is where we are. So four years for driving under the influence repeatedly. And causing severe damage to a young lady. So mm-hmm. just wanted to give y'all an update. Um, and then something we didn't talk about, but I want to table it until we get some additional information. But the owners of the commanders, Tanya and Dan Snyder, um, hired uh, Bank of America security team to start exploring the sale of their franchise. Mm-hmm. And so I want to table this because there's some stuff going on there that ain't quite made it to light. Oh, yeah. So, right. So uh, who is it? John Gruden. Mm-hmm. Was a casualty and a fallout of some investigations going on with the commanders, but they never really said what they found during that investigation. But now the owners are looking to sell. So, yes. they, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Absolutely. And they're just trying to sell and make their money. And I think that they were probably asked to so that, that uh-huh. all these other things don't come to light. That's what I think personally. Yeah. But we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> okay. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, but... I, again, I want to get some more information or wait till some more information come out is if you have been under a rock, Giselle and Tom Brady mm-hmm. have gotten a divorce. Yeah. And we were speculating, especially when Tom missed some time doing training camp earlier this season. But everybody's speculating that um, he and Giselle are, are separating because he didn't retire. And so... We'll see. But, you know, everybody got something to say. Like, oh, Giselle knew he wanted to play till he was 45. Or mm-hmm. why would she leave somebody that's making this much money? Mm-hmm. All the things. But I don't like to give in to speculation. We got a lot of thoughts on those comments. Yeah. But again. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah, if yeah, it'll yeah. ever come out because Tom did make his mm-hmm. statement, you know, saying that, you know, it just didn't work out. And they're, they're in a space where they're trying to be the best co-parents for their kids as possible. Um mm-hmm. You know, they went, I think they went to a food bank, I think, actually, and um, and served food. So they're trying oh, to- Oh, what, last week? Yeah. So I I think oh. they're just trying to keep it classy and positive. I don't even know if we'll ever know, but it is unfortunate because, you know, mm-hmm. with stars and that limelight, I feel like it's hard for them to stay together. I don't know why, but it's just, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. <laughs> It does, but I don't even know if it's the limelight. That's why I was like, okay, I don't want to speculate a whole lot because they Giselle was a model. Yeah, who is a like one of the world. Well, no, the world's greatest NFL player, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a there's some things going on. Just yeah. I don't know, but I don't like speculating. Yeah, so you're right. You're right. We'll take it. We'll yeah. see. Okay, so now okay. on to this week's hot takes. Mm-hmm. So this week we are discussing the controversy surrounding Drake's new album okay. titled Her Her Loss. So it came out this past Friday and immediately, Grasse, within maybe an hour, the folks had social media um, ablaze, specifically um, talking about two songs. So one of the songs is called Circle Loco, where in the song he implies that uh, Megan The Stallion you know, rapper, um, Mm -hmm. award-winning rapper um, out of Houston is lying about being shot by singer Tory Lanez. So if y'all remember a few summers ago, sometime during lockup, I said during lockup, during COVID. COVID, (laughs) AKA lockup. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Megan was shot in her foot, both of her feet. And she tried to, they they tried to keep it under wraps for a little bit, but she eventually came out and said that Tory Lanez shot her. And ever since, people have been accusing her of lying, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So he goes on and says, Shorty says she graduated, um, or excuse me, let me read the line specifically. It says, okay. this B, I ain't gonna cuss, line, <laughs> this B lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. stallion. And then later on in the song, he says, Shorty says she graduated, she ain't learned enough, play your album, track one, K, I heard enough. So 
Of course, for all intents and purposes, mm-hmm. everybody knows he's referring to Megan Thee Stallion. Mm-hmm. Now you have like this divided social media team on one side, of course, his team, Drake, um, and they're saying, oh, it's just wordplay. He's not talking about you. He's talking about um, butt shots or he's not talking about this, that and the third, whatever. Mm-hmm. And of course, Megan is pissed because she's like, why are y'all always mentioning my name and what happened to me and accusing me or implying that I'm lying Mm -hmm. about being shot by freaking Tory Lanez? Mm -hmm. So did you hear any of this, Toya? So I heard a little, but I didn't really know if it was true or I didn't know if Drake was really implying because like, I'm, I mean, Uh I think people always are going to, okay, let's just start here. Number one is controversy sales, Right. So Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people use a play on words to make it about something that it may not necessarily be. That could be the case. Um, Mm -hmm. However, if it's not, it's none of Drake's business. How about that? It's none of his Mm -hmm. business. He has his own issues and dramas that he's been through, okay? So like for him to be the guy and the rapper that always minds his business and stays out of mess, interesting that he... Maybe was not it's talking about mess. Megan, but maybe was. I don't know. But I just don't know why he would go there. And, mm-hmm. you know, we were just talking about this, me and a girlfriend, that, you know, black women are the most unprotected women out there. You mm-hmm. know, when you look mm-hmm. at society, you know, it's black people are already at the bottom. But lower than that is black women. And it's just so unfortunate yeah. that mm-hmm. Drake would even go there. Whatever your thoughts yeah. are can be your thoughts and your opinions, but it's not your business. And it's not going to do anything positive for the community or for black women. So I just feel like Drake needs to mind his business. What about you? You know what? I think um, I think that as a society, we normalize a lot of things that just ain't right. Yeah. And we think, so of course, when this came out, and I was listening to The Breakfast Club, DJ Envy's like, that is what rap is. There's been plenty of examples where, you know, this bar, this line played on this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's true. But the shit still ain't right. It's not, especially like because nothing. somebody got shot in their feet. Like, this is not something you play around with. This is someone's life. Exactly. Exactly. And it and it really made me think about this all of this controversy associated with Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Like, Kanye West is doing and saying anti-black mm-hmm. rhetoric, yep. right? And we have this, like, divided group of black people. People that are like, some people are okay with, oh, no, it's fine. That's not what he meant. That's da 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 da. And then you have people that are truly pissed, right? Yeah. But where do you draw the line in the saying, well, right is right and wrong is wrong? Right. Like, the shit's not funny. It's not. It's not. And it's right. Just, like, there's no sugarcoating this. The shit is just not funny. Agreed. 100%. Um, and then, of course, with the anti Semitic um, anti Semitic comments, like, there was a clear line in the sand of, like, you cross this line collectively this is not right Mm -hmm. you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying like i wish that we would do more of that because to your point yes he needs to mind his business and things of that nature whatever but we have got to protect each other yeah and it just doesn't happen and it's never happened it does not happen it's we're the only culture like like, that it's really unfortunate because you know to your point think about all the things kanye said about black people from george floyd all the things he said before he made the anti-Semitic comments, nobody said anything. Mm-hmm. There was no, there was no hoopla. People weren't in an uproar. But as soon as he started talking about the Jewish community, no, people were in the uproar. N- no, not no, to no. the people point the where uproar. he got silenced and muted, and everybody started dropping him. People didn't start dropping what, him though? until that community connect collectively got together and was like, "No, you're not. You can do that with I your agree, community, but, but not with us." But what? No, no, no. But what did you just say? Like that community came together. Yeah. Like. Uh, even amongst our, like amongst the African-American community, there was a clear division, right? And like, we do have power, right? Just like we collectively were like boycotting shit when Joy, when that stuff happened with George yep. Floyd, we need to do the same thing in terms of come together and have one voice uh-huh. as it pertains to the um, rhetoric and the disparaging things that we say to our community, including Drake's line yes. and this, this, that shit's not okay. Not I don't okay, like Drake. We, we went on a tangent, right. but it's not okay. Leave us out of it. You have enough money. You have so many other things you can talk about and put a spotlight mm-hmm. on. Leave Meg the Stallion out of it. Thank you. Girl. Well, then he wasn't done. Okay. He was not done. Okay. There was another track on the um, album called Middle of the Ocean where he starts throwing shade at Serena Williams', Williams husband, um, Alexis Ohana. Mm. 
I probably mispronounced his name, but y'all knew I'm talking about the founder and owner of Reddit. Um, but he states, Sidebar Serena, your husband's a groupie. Drake, one of the biggest groupies, is telling uh, Alexis that he's a groupie. And I, li- I like his um, comeback because he said, I'll be a groupie. Not in these exact words, but in so many words. I'll be a groupie for my wife and daughter. Like, I'm okay with right. it. Right. Once again, mind yours. Why do you care? <laughs> <laughs> Not only why do you care, but I'm like between Alexis and then even Russell, like how Russell and um, Sierra's relationship mm-hmm. is. People have a have like have a problem with women being treated black well. women being treated like queens. Drake had his Listen. opportunity and chance with Serena. He blew it. So just keep it. I moving. forgot about that. <laughs> keep it moving, bro. You had your chance. Kick rocks. Listen. Listen, I forgot about it. Well, needless to say, I will not be listening to Drake's album nope. um, in its entirety because I'm I'm tired. Yeah, okay, and I'm tired of like the whole controversy sales. Like I'm tired of that too. Like mm-hmm. the disrespect, the things that people have to say to sell records. Then it's not a good record if you can't sell on the fact that you mm-hmm. are a solid artist. Then I don't want it either. It's that, that simple. part. That part. It's that simple. All right, enough about this week's hot takes, y'all. Coming up next, our conversation with Erica Donald. On the show today, we welcome Erica Donald, wife of Super Bowl champ Aaron Donald of the Los Angeles Rams. She is currently the marketing manager for Aaron Donald, as well as the interim chairperson for Aaron Donald 99 Solutions Foundation. To say the least, this woman is busy. Erica Donald, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Okay, so we have so much to talk about because you are just this woman of so many layers. You do so much and it's just so inspiring. So we wanted to get you on so people could just find out more about you and how you do it all. So let's talk about how you ended up in this realm um, in your career of working in the NFL. Well, um, I actually grew up in the NFL. My dad coached football for about 40 years, um, 13 years in college, the remainder in the NFL. Um, So football's in my blood, Um, sports in general, (laughs) because I just come from a huge sports family, but um, fell in love with football at a very young age um, and decided that at the time, I mean, now you've got women coaching and women playing and mm -hmm. high schools and college and everything like that. But at the time, you know, that wasn't necessarily a reality. So I was like, all right, well, if I can't coach, I would always tell my dad, if I can't coach, then I'm just going to go work behind the scenes. Um, and so that's kind of how I started. Um, my When I, I went to Louisiana State University, and I got my degree in public relations with a minor in business administration. And I worked in LSU football at the time when I was there, um, following college, I went and worked with an event planning agency that planned some major events, including the Dick Vitale Gala, um, um, which a lot of people are very familiar with. Um, And then following that, I went and um, I interned with the Rams actually in, I think it was like 2012, um, over training camp. And my dad was actually coaching there at the time. So it was really cool to have that overlap with him. Ray Sherman. Ray Sherman. Okay. Yes. And Uh, which um, NFL teams did he work for? Okay, so he worked for, so when I was born, San Francisco 49ers, um, and I might not go in order, but New York Jets, um, Pittsburgh Steelers, Minnesota Vikings, Green Bay Packers, Tennessee Titans, he was with the Houston Oilers before they were the Titans. Um, Yeah, (laughs) okay. He coached uh, Dallas Cowboys, um, St. Louis Rams, um, I'm probably missing some, to be honest with you. So you traveled? Did you travel to all of these places? Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, So you you had a a glimpse into the craziness that is the NFL on a much deeper level. Right. Yes, absolutely. We were all like, what? It's time to go? I know. (laughs) You got to leave now? (laughs) 
<laughs> and it's so funny because a lot of people ask me, they're like, was it difficult for you to move around so much? And what I always say, my parents made it really easy for us. Um, just as kids, I, I don't know what they did, but they just made it easy. We were excited to move. Um, they always encourage us to make new friends, meet new people, try new things. And that was just a part of the life. Um, and a lot of teams that we went to made the transition really easy. Um, they they would have um, a lot of times like staff members back then that were there when you were transitioning and that would be your point person for the family and they would say, okay, your kids are six and three or whatever the case may be. These coaches, these players have kids the same age. They go to these school districts and it would just kind of be very helpful in that sense. And That's then I started awesome. getting bored when I was in a place too long. I was like, All right, are we going to move anytime soon? <laughs> Start getting the itch. Like it's time to go. <laughs> yes. Like, okay. So you liked fun. the adventure, like the adventure of going different places, meeting new people. Loved it. I loved it. And it's, it was really neat for me because I, truly have friends all over. And it's nice because, um, you know, the, the true friends, the ones that are, are there all the time, no matter what, no matter how you continue to grow, because oftentimes people grow apart and that's normal and natural. Um, but I, I still have a lot of friends in almost every state that I've lived in, uh, which is really cool. Um, and same thing with my parents. You know, when you're younger, all you can do is go to school and have play dates and learn. So <laughs> the parents have to get really close as well. Just, yeah. you know, like who's watching my kid and whose house yeah. am I letting them in? So um, my, my parents have a lot of really long time friendships that they've carried as well. So it's it's beautiful. There's a lot of challenges, but it's, it's yeah. awesome. What's your favorite place that you live that really kind of sticks out in your mind? This one's tough. I get this question a lot. And <laughs> okay. it's it's hard because I everywhere I lived, I was a different age. So it's hard for me to say, like, I loved Minnesota because I love the snow. We would go sledding in the wintertime. There was lakes. You could go on the lake in the summertime. Um, and it's really seeing the all four seasons, the change in the leaves, like it, it was really beautiful from that aspect. And then I met a lot of amazing people in Minnesota. Um, but it's hard because I'm like, would I have liked Minnesota if I was in high school? You know, is there yeah. a lot yeah, to yeah. do? I, I split mm -hmm. high school between Tennessee and Texas. So um, I started in Tennessee, ended high school in Texas. And, you know, at that age, you're starting to drive, you're starting to get like a little more freedom and, and yes. you know, heavily yeah. in high school sports. So you're traveling and all of these things. So I, I enjoyed that aspect of it as well. But and there's a mm -hmm. lot in both Tennessee and Texas and the areas that we were in. But it's so hard to say and just pick one. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so your time during um, your stint with the Rams is when you met your husband, Aaron, right? So when I interned there, it was before he got drafted. He got drafted in 14. When I okay. worked there, so I, I started working in Tampa with the Bucks, and then I ended up leaving Tampa, going to work with the Rams. And so I was mm -hmm. working at the Rams and we had like, we had crossed paths. It was, I was there in 2015. So he was there for a season. My dad was still there. Um, and so I was still going back and forth anyways. And so we had crossed paths, but it was just like, it was never anything that it is now. Hold on. Before you get into the story though, how did your dad feel when y'all did start dating with him, like having an NFL background, knowing <laughs> players and stuff like that like how how was he when you were like I think I'm gonna date him so you know what it was it was so funny because like he he loves Aaron he's like Aaron is such a good man which Aaron he really is amazing man amazing father amazing husband uh and so it's a blessing from that aspect from the beginning I feel like if it was anybody else if I was like dad like I'm dating he would be like huh but like with Aaron <laughs> I literally texted both my parents because we had been dating and then we're like, OK, I feel like we're getting serious. Like we need to say something. But I don't I'm not that I'm not like, oh, my gosh, I'm dating, you know, whatever. Like even with yeah. friends, like I'm just very private until, you know, it's something that you actually want to do. And so, yes, we both were like, 
uh, like, okay, now it's time to tell. And so <laughs> I text both my parents. He told his parents. I forget if he texted them or if he, like, told them on the phone. And his mom was like, I already knew. Like, she was like, I already <laughs> knew. Like, you, you can't get nothing past me, whatever. And so I, I was like... I text my parents and I was like, hey, mom and dad, Aaron and I are dating. Okay, don't be weird. Bye. Like, I was like, don't make <laughs> a big deal out of it. It's it's whatever. And and everybody was just excited on both sides, which was which was awesome. So but that it was awesome. so funny. Yeah, we didn't start dating until it was like 20. I don't even know. 2018, I think it was mm. 2017, 2018. Um, and so I was still actually at the team. And so we were just like very private about it because I'm so weird about that stuff. I'm like, yeah. yeah, listen, I'm not playing games like not only with my career, but, you know, mm -hmm. like when things happen, they happen and it's just mm -hmm. undeniable. And we just started spending a lot of time together because I started working with him on some other stuff. And then we truly just became the best of friends. And then one day we were like, this is a thing. And so like, that's just what it was, but it was, yeah. it just, I happened. love it. Who's who, but who's, I need to know, like, was he like, you know what? <laughs> do I want to like, was he like, do I want to go there? Or were you like, you know, I'm kind of feeling him. Like, how did you guys even like open up the conversation? Because you've so had this platonic relationship for so I long, know. you know, it was yeah. so, it was so weird. Like we were both <laughs> just like, cause we always joke. We're like, I never would have dated you. Like we just, I, I don't <laughs> like to say I have a type and he doesn't really either, but like neither one of us ever dated somebody just kind of that was not only like just appearance, like, but just career feel, just all of these mm -hmm. things. Like, mm -hmm. I never thought I would date an athlete at all. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to date like an engineer or, you know, doctor or something. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I grew up in sports. Like, I'm like, I don't need to be in that my whole life. Like, I know yeah. it's, it's crazy and hectic and other fields are as well, but I just mm -hmm. never thought that that's what it would be. But, um, but yeah, we just, there was one day, um, we had like seen each other just about every day and it was just like a couple of hours here and there, you know, helping mm -hmm. him out with stuff. And, um, and then there was one day there was no communication at all. And it wasn't just for any reason. I was just like, okay, there's nothing that we need to you talk need to, to each out. other for today. And yeah. it was so funny because the next day we were, <laughs> we talked about it after the fact, but you get to a point where you're like, like, do I, I want to text this person. Like, I want to hit them up and just see what they're doing or how their day's going yeah. and, you know, just see what they're up to. And, and it, we didn't talk about that until after the fact, but we ended up mm -hmm. just kind of having a conversation. Like, I missed you. Like, you know, and it was very weird to, to say yeah. that. And, but we uh -huh. were both on the same page. So it was just like a relief kind of yeah. for both of us. Um, but that the other person felt the same way. Yes, because it's so, you're just like, you you spend so much time with somebody and you don't think that you actually are going to develop feelings for them by any mm, means, yeah. but we just Or you were probably did. trying not to, right? Yeah, I you mean, like honestly, I like, yeah. yes. And so it was just like, it was weird. And then, you know, you're just kind of like, oh, no, no, no. We, we talked about this anymore. dating and <laughs> yeah. And that's really what it came down to. We were just like- if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it like you know might as well um mm -hmm. but we grew very serious very fast so it mm -hmm. was it was crazy like still is that's awesome i think it's great <laughs> yeah i think Thank it's you. great for many reasons obviously because you guys had uh this relationship where you had already developed not just the career side but even the friendship right so there's like these layers that a lot of people miss right they kind of go yes. right into the romantic yes. um and so because you have that foundation it does like make way for the you know the natural romantic side to come in when it was mm -hmm. supposed to right absolutely so i think yes. it's i think it's a great thing thank you <laughs> i know and that was it i was like listen, stay far away from me, sir. Like, we're not, we, no intimacy, no nothing. We truly were just like getting to know each other. And a lot of people are like, what? I mean, we don't really mm -hmm. talk about that either. But when people do ask, I'm like, no, we, we literally, it was strictly platonic, like really getting to know each other and understand mm -hmm. each other for who we are. Excuse me, for who we are. Like he was going through a lot. I had a lot going on. So, um, 
it just it just worked out yeah, and we're so thankful to this day because we feel like in our relationship we've been able to establish such a solid foundation of who mm -hmm. we are and our beliefs and um you know, I've got two bonus babies and and my son. And so we just talk about just our values and how we want to raise them and and be a family mm -hmm. unit and and all of that. So um, it was it was just it's beautiful how it kind of just all came together. So, yeah. So I, I got two questions. So the first <laughs> question is and this comes from. So when um, Cliff was drafted, I was working in corporate America, different state, whatever. But I always felt a little weird when people ask, like, so who you're dating or whatever, um, because he was an athlete. Now, so did you feel a way like your coworkers and stuff when they w were inquiring about who you were dating or when they found out um, who you were dating? Did you were you kind of nervous about like, OK, what will they think now that I'm dating a player? Um, I mean, always there's there's always that that like. You don't want to be judged like nobody really knows the yeah. the real behind the scenes answer um when we actually publicly came out i was no longer working there um so uh -huh. it was it for me it wasn't really like a big deal and then um people that i did work with like um mm -hmm. just my old boss and some other people on football operations they're like totally get it coach even coach McVeigh, he was like i totally get it like he was like you guys <laughs> oh, young, he, he was so literally so. like i i get it he was I like, saw this coming. I saw yeah, this coming. Yeah, he was like, literally, I saw this coming. <laughs> you guys are perfect. And and that's just what it was. And um mm -hmm. and it worked out. I ended up telling um my my former boss, who I love so much, still talk to her to this day, uh, the uh -huh. day after I quit, um, and I went to work for another company. But I I was like, Hey, just so you know, like it'll probably, you know make its yeah, way to yeah. the light soon but Aaron and I are dating and she was like I knew it <laughs> you know <laughs> everyone it's so funny she you know everybody's just like I knew it whatever um but nobody you, was really you, you weird think about you're creeping, it but they knew no. yeah and and nobody was weird about it um mm -hmm. I still like I still talk to so many of my coworkers that you know that I worked with uh, like uh, I cross paths with a lot of really amazing people um mm -hmm. and and you know it's still just like normal it's like nothing has changed nothing's okay. weird it's not you know so it's been cool okay. yeah okay so how was it blending because you said you have two bonus babies I do how was that like you being introduced to them and now <laughs> you guys are married and yes just um it w honestly my transition blending with them was smooth I I love them so much you know like we have mm -hmm. such a great relationship Aww. and and I'm so blessed from that aspect because I know mm -hmm. a lot of blended families it's really difficult to connect yeah. with other kids and um, they just are trying to find their place and um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day what Aaron and I always talk about is is as a child like nobody nobody asks not only to be born, but just like the situation mm -hmm. that they're born into or for their parents to be together or not be together or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And while I did not come from a blended family, a lot of my cousins and aunts and uncles mm -hmm. have blended families. So I've seen how it can be great and how it can be terrible, to yeah. be honest mm -hmm. with you. And so yeah. my biggest thing is just making sure they're receiving love and they are happy and they're healthy and they're safe and they have a safe environment, a good environment to come into. And that's yeah. all I care about. I'm like any other noise. I mean, there's always going to be stuff that happens and comes up. And and the way that I just operate is I'm like that. That doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. affect me. If it's not about them, then right. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? As long mm -hmm. as they're good, they're happy, they're healthy, they're safe. That's all we can ask for. And I mean, like, they love, they love their dad. All of them. I mean, my son yeah. wakes up, I go get him and he's like, Dada? I'm like, <laughs> love you too, <laughs> honey. Mama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mom. No, but it's, it's, it's so funny because it's, I mean, he's gone most of the time. And even when he is home, he's, he's not home because he's studying and doing recovery mm -hmm. and stuff. So I, I love that because he doesn't always get to see dad every morning. And, and when he does, yeah. it's, it's awesome. And, you know, and he has a he great relationship with his siblings. Like, I just feel like we are, are so blessed from that aspect, um, just awesome. with our whole situation. So it's awesome. Okay. So I want to talk about it because I think about my kids and they were old enough where they, 
understand and they remember their dad playing. And so, Mm -hmm. um, so Aaron is in a similar position with his kids. Like, okay, so, but we didn't win a Super Bowl. Y'all won a Super Bowl. I want to talk about what did your kids think about all of that that happened last year, or I guess earlier this year. It was, it was so crazy. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, they're old enough to get it. Like talk about that perspective, even for you. Oh my gosh. It was... I, I like every time I, we haven't <laughs> talked about it in a while because this season isn't going how we thought it would go. But, you know, that's yeah, a whole that's other it. thing. That's the NFL. But it is. It sure is. But I mean, mm-hmm. last season was insane. Uh, it was a whirlwind. It was yeah. beautiful. I mean, for Aaron, he has literally achieved just about every other accolade that he could have wanted mm-hmm. to. And even once he didn't want to or care to, he achieved yeah. them. So mm-hmm. the last thing on his list was a Super Bowl. Um, and last year, we joke all the time because I had uh, my son on September 1st. And uh, mm-hmm. and I was like, Super Bowl, baby. Like, I was just like, Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> and then we ended you up... spoke it into existence. Yes, I'm like, we ended up winning the Super Bowl. Um, but... It, for the for Jaden and AJ, I mean, mm-hmm. first of all, they not only love their father so much, but just to be able to see him play. Um, Jada mm-hmm. was born when he was in college. And so to see kind of that progression from college getting yeah. drafted, going to the NFL, and AJ is now, Jada's nine, AJ six. So they've seen it. They've experienced it. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're always so proud. And, and that's yeah. just like the yeah. most, they're like, you know, daddy, we're so proud of you. Jada was in tears. And, you know, Aww. they, they when the Rams went to the Super Bowl, oh my gosh, I think that was 2018, um, and ended up losing to the Patriots, you know, Jada was like, dad, oh, you know, I thought yeah. you said I was going to be able to go play in the confetti and wasn't able to do <laughs> oh. that. And he was like, I promise you'll be able to play in the confetti. So it was really Tell cool. Tell me y'all got a good photo of this baby playing in this uh, confetti. Absolutely. So many photos. <laughs> so, oh, um, but she was able to play her and AJ. I still have confetti upstairs that, that I just mm-hmm. saved because they were like loading mm-hmm. it in pockets and everything. And, yep. and we just kept it all. But they, I mean, they're so mm-hmm. proud. And Eric was too young to truly understand, but just for him to have that whole experience of even just being yeah. there and being able to, for not only Aaron and I to share these stories with him, but for Jade and AJ to be able to share these stories with their younger brother, who was, you know, truly like five yeah. months at the time is yeah. incredible. And we're just so proud. I mean, we had so many conversations, Aaron and I leading up to the game, just mm-hmm. just talking about it and and what it would Mm -hmm. mean and how he would react and and all of that and it was just I mean you couldn't have written the story any better because for whatever reason the Niners have a hold over us in the regular season and (laughs) uh, (laughs) honestly but you know what so both of us played in uh for the Seahawks right so the NFC West is just so competitive and these teams can suck all year round but when they play each other it's yes. like next level. Like it is a true dog fight every time. It is. We'll never understand it. We'll never. <laughs> Be we'll like, never. you did not play the Ravens like this last week. No, I'm just like, <laughs> right. <laughs> but honestly, it's it's always just like, what is going on? And then it's just stressful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for us, I mean, like every game counts, but it was amazing, yeah. you know, not when we lost regular season last year, but Niners go to Green mm-hmm. Bay, beat the Packers, come back, mm-hmm. have to play us at home after we had just mm-hmm. lost to them. And yeah. I remember talking to Aaron and he was like, I want the Niners at home. Like his whole mindset is Real I don't top. want the easy way out. I want Dang. I want to go through these teams where it is difficult and to prove we are the best. And, and that's what they did. So beat them at yeah. home. We were like... I just still remember I don't know the why moment. Want the hard route, though. It's more Listen, like vengeance. I'd be I think, like, just too. get to where you need to get. That's to. That's what I'm okay. saying. But <laughs> like, no, I'm like, there's games that are so stressful, and I'll be like, and you know, even mm-hmm. when we win, I'll be like, I I don't know how you do this. I can't do this. And he was like, What are you talking <laughs> Every, about? Yeah. That was fun. Like I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Glad you enjoyed. My yourself. blood pressure is I here, know. but okay. <laughs> Look, Happy you enjoyed yourself. No, it's yourself. fun in Great. retirement where you ain't got to worry about if your husband going to walk off the field Listen. on his own cognizant or cart. Listen. You know what I mean? So Listen. Like, no, this is not fun. Yes, I, exactly. I need to know. I need to know what type of wife you are when you're in the stands. <laughs> 
Because that, I mean, everybody's there. You have the ones, you have the praying wives, you know, yes. you have the quiet ones that clap, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have the ones that are like, ah, like, I need to know who is Erica when she's in the stands. <laughs> uh, Erica is a character. I will say that. I'm like, I am like full force locked into the game as if I am on the field. And yeah. because I, there's days where I'll literally... I wait till Aaron to get to hit the end of his week after he studied his film and knows how he's going to play somebody or what he's going to do. But mm -hmm. I'll sit with him and I'll like look at all the schemes and, and uh -huh. kind of like try to go through the playbook with him and say, OK, you know, when you're here, what are you going to do and what's the linebacker going to do and and all of these things to try to get an idea. And so I'm I'm truly watching from that aspect as well. And and understanding, um, you know, I'm not yeah. going to go into football terms that, like if yeah. he's just going to bull rush or hit a swim move yeah. and come around. But I'm like, I'm really trying to watch for that stuff. And then if there's a bad call, I'm screaming. I'm like, come on, ref. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Press interference, Bill. Like, you know, or holding. Yeah. Like, are we not going to call it this Get game? Off. Like, yeah. what's going Throw on? You know? Flag. Yes. Uh, that is, that is me. I'm the one that's jumping up and down and screaming. But... That's me. So, you okay. know. All right. Okay. I can't wait to see you when these babies start playing. Man. I'm like, she going to be know, a, a piece. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. You know how they have, Look, like, stage oh, moms for dancers? That that might be. Legit. Yeah. Okay. And you sound like a Toya. Because a Toya be quick be like, that was our wrong route. Yes. Hey. Why I, did you listen, call that play? Yes. Yes. I, yes, I, yes. I thought I was bad with Nate. Oh, forget about it. With my babies, I am it's on 10. It is so bad. And the refs know me. They're like, oh, here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they respect it. They're like, we get it. We know. You know. Yeah. Yes. All right. So switching gears a little bit. So you said when you left um, the Rams, you went to work for another company. Uh, what company was that? Um, I went to work for Game One. Um, at the okay. time, it was a startup. And what... The purpose of it was to basically tell stories by way of content. So um, not necessarily a production company, more of like a content agency. Um, and so oh, okay. I was vice president of athlete partnerships and it was my role to um, kind of develop new partnerships and, and find stories that are very unique about these individuals. I don't always just like to say athletes because they're people, um, but just find unique stories about different individuals and, um, and find a way to, to amplify them and tell them. Um, oftentimes there are so many people out there that have amazing stories, whether it's where they come from, their background, um, and their sport, the way that they train, the things they have to overcome, um, mm -hmm. and just different life stories. And not everybody gets to hear them, um, you know. That's so true. So, yeah. So, um, we know that you were signed with Donda Sports, and um, it was a way to support black businesses. There's all these gr great business ventures that you were looking forward to, and things just kind of took a turn. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So um, both my husband and I were um, at Donna Sports. Um, Aaron signed on just as an athlete. Me signed on to do player marketing, which is what I've been doing for Aaron um, mm -hmm. anyways for mm -hmm. the past couple of years. And like you mentioned, it was a really great opportunity. Um, after having many conversations, um, it was the, the purpose of it was to really uplift our communities, um, mm -hmm. help build them, provide opportunities that aren't always there. Um, and it just ended up not being a great fit. Um, my husband and I put out a statement. Um, there were just a lot of things that we didn't agree with, um, just mm -hmm. that were being said. And the unfortunate part about it is just a lot of kids are being affected right now, mm -hmm. um, just with, with, the school, um, there's a basketball team under Donda that's just under Donda Sports that's being affected. So mm -hmm. it's just unfortunate for the kids because there are consequences with your actions and the things that you say. Right. And excuse me. And that just kind of trickles down. And so um, while we're no longer a part of Donda Sports, uh, we're hoping that we can still figure out ways to help, you know, support, support the kids. young kids and their mm -hmm. families just to make sure that um they're not 
receiving the the brunt end of the consequences that have come down. So yeah, because um, ultimately you know. that's what it's about. It's about you know, like you said, giving back to the kids in the community and uplifting. And so yes, <clears throat> all these things that happen, yes. it really does affect them. You know, and oh so yes, I could only imagine like going through that and yes. having to make those tough decisions and explain that. Ugh. And that's the hard part for kids is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, for us, it wasn't a tough decision. We, we knew what we needed to do um, mm -hmm. and, and wanted to do. Um, but, mm -hmm. but for the kids, it, it unfortunately is a tough decision um, where they're kind of yeah. forced to be put in grown up positions when they don't really need to be there. They don't deserve to be there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. So we want to uh, talk about what you have planned next. <laughs> What is next for you? What do you see yourself doing? If you go back to like young Erica and where you mm -hmm. were and then thinking about all the accolades and the things that you've done to now, like what are you looking forward to? That's an excellent question. I feel like from a career standpoint, um, just continuing to um, help, support, uplift my husband. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not always easy when you work with your significant other <laughs> in life, um, but truly Actually, from- Actually, that is a question that I have. <laughs> That's a okay? great point. Because, <laughs> yeah. listen, <laughs> because, so I know you said that you supported him from a marketing standpoint for years at this point, but that's yes. your wheelhouse, right? Like you are the expert in that in that space. Yes. So how was it with, with him? Like, okay, let me do this. Like, I, I, I got this situation. Like, did y'all butt heads and stuff? Like, how was that relationship? No. So <laughs> we don't really butt heads uh, when it comes to work. When uh -huh. it's like, hey, Aaron, I need you to do this. Or you have this commitment or that commitment. Because he understands when he makes a commitment, you got to follow through with it. Right. Um, unless there's extenuating circumstances where it can't happen it has to be pushed or whatever the case may be where it gets tricky is if he comes home and he has a rough day at work and right. um mm -hmm. or just a long day you know not necessarily a rough day and he's maybe not in the best mood or you know there's all kinds of things that are going yeah. on and so and you know and then i have to be like I need to answer to this or, you know, you, I have yeah. to talk mm -hmm. about something and I have to just find that balance of being like, okay, give him his personal time. You know, you can push mm -hmm. an answer to this time. So whether it's 5 PM, depending on West coast, East coast, cause that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. like just give him his time, let him have a moment. And then I always mm -hmm. have to be like, Hey, so I know you don't want to talk about this right now, but I do need to an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so can you please it. <laughs> just give me that and then I'll leave you alone. Okay, cool. Yeah. And and so it, it's just, it, it's that balance. Um, yeah, because uh -huh. you're mixing like I, being a yeah. wife and being a business oh, yeah. partner mm -hmm. and they're blending. Mm -hmm. And so yes. you have to find that like, how do I say this without yes. sounding like the wife, but sound, for, you know what I mean? It's, it is difficult. I can yes. understand yes. that. And sometimes the lines are blurred and I got to be like, <laughs> I don't care if you're bad right now. I need this answer. <laughs> like, right. you know, and you, and you just, you just have to figure it out. And it's, it, what makes it harder, honestly, mm -hmm. is when we're on set and okay. he just did a couple of, um, major national commercials that are going to be coming out mm -hmm. fairly soon here in the next couple of months. And, um, there was one set where he had a makeup artist that was not great. And it bothers me. Gr granted, like he doesn't really need makeup, but sometimes they just like on the camera to put it on. And so it bothers me when there's people on set that you're working with that don't know how to do people of color or they don't have the right lighting or there's blending. And that's in all industries, whether it's sports, whether it's fashion, like there's just, if you're going to have, you know, a uh, black woman with 4C hair, make sure you know there's somebody on set that knows how to do it. You know what I'm yes. saying? And so yep. like I you was know like, who you brought on as talent. Yes. You make sure you were putting them in the best light. Absolutely. And so I was like, we were on set and it was late. And normally it's on a day that he doesn't normally do anything. And I was just like, okay. You know, so he wanted to get in and out. So he started doing the makeup. And there were like clumps and I'm like wiping the clumps. And she's like, I didn't blend that in yet. I'm like, no, there, there were clumps of like, like it wasn't a booger, but it looked like, like skin, I know like talking about it, that uh -huh. you can't even it, see. Yes. And I could literally just 
peel it off. And so I just peeled it off. And um, and at this point, this lady's probably like, this, who is this lady? And she's driving me nuts already, you know? Uh -huh. And then she was done. And I was like, you, you didn't blend. And then she started getting another color. And I was like, do you not have a color that matches his skin tone? Or do you not know how to mix colors together? And Aaron was just like, he's just looking at me like, if you don't just chill out so we can get in and out of this shoot. And I'm like, I don't want you to look crazy on the TV screen. Right. <laughs> like, yes. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm like, you don't wear makeup. You don't do mm -hmm. any of this. You're not involved. You hate when I wear makeup. So I know you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm yeah. like, just even though it's a pain in the butt for you, like just allow me to do this because they have to get it right. This is, this is mm -hmm. their job. And it would, I would be doing a disservice if I just let you as your wife and as your marketing person, just let you walk, walk out. However, crazy. Yeah. exactly. Yes. And so Listen. it's like, don't it's sometimes this commercial come out and he don't look right. <laughs> Listen, He'll be like, why you let me look? I'm like gonna this? hit y'all up. And I'm gonna say, did y'all see that? How did he look? Okay. <laughs> I deal with this all the time with Nate. I am that oh I am that gosh. wife texting like uh, at break time. Please tell your makeup artist. Da, 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 and he'd be like, <laughs> "So I got to do a sidebar yes. real quick. I'll give you an example. Like, we we were at we had a a costume party. We have an adult costume party um, every year, and uh -huh. so Nate invited some of his coworkers. So she she shows up, and he's like, "Hey, this is my wife. This is this is she's the one that's always texting me and telling me that you need to fix things." And I'm like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna always be that one. Nice to meet you, though. Absolutely. Look, low key, though. Actually, give me your number so I can text you. Real so directly. Like, and they's like, no, <laughs> please don't give, please don't give her your number. Look, they be they always have something to say when we speak up or like get into always. that you know very stern situation. But you know you appreciate it. Okay? Yeah, for sure, please, for sure. Listen. And to your point, you don't. There shouldn't be people that are doing makeup that don't know how to do skin of color. It, it's, yes. I mean, like people with uh, melanin in their skin because yes. it is different. And if you yes. don't know that, just take a step back, find, let somebody else in there that yes. knows what they're doing. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And because that is, it's the worst, but it is, you know, yeah. making strides. That was a com complete derail. I know, we but totally we derailed. About, <laughs> we were, I know, <laughs> that's okay. But, okay, let's uh, well, one more question, and then we'll get into this game. <laughs> yes, we never oh. talked about what is next for you. What oh, what yes. do you want it. to do uh, next? Because you've done so much, and I know you yeah. got some stuff penciled in. You're dreaming and journaling. Yes, um, I mean, outside of just taking my husband's just marketing ventures to the next level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, getting involved in more business ventures, um, whether it's mm -hmm. investing. I know, I mean, he's already been doing it for a while, but me personally on my own, not so much. And so we've just had a lot mm -hmm. of those conversations as well um, and really just kind of expanding into other stuff. There was there was some stuff that I was trying to essentially have done by now, which I'm not going to talk about yet. Um, and then I was pregnant in COVID and then mm -hmm. had my baby in COVID and then football season just like yeah. snuck up. And so, um, you know, I don't like to be in the position where I feel like I'm pushing all of my dreams and all the things I want to mm -hmm. accomplish off to the side, but mm -hmm. I'm like, they're just on hold. Both yeah. Aaron and I are very determined people. Um, we're very locked in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't ever just look at something and say, ah, oh, I didn't get to it. I'm just not going to do it. I'll just be like, not right now. Now is not the time. Yeah. There is yeah. a reason for that. And, you know, God only knows, but it's okay. And, it's okay. and we'll make it happen when it's time. Right. So um, exactly. I'm just thankful to be able to have his support on a lot of stuff. Um, and, mm -hmm. and we just are able to just build and grow together. Um, and it's awesome. So it is awesome. Know, that's right. <laughs> yes. Okay. You ready awesome. to play a game? Uh Oh, <laughs> I love games. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to switch it up. But we're going to play a game. It's, it's called two minute drill. So it's really easy. Um, okay. We're going to ask you this or that questions, or we're just going to ask you a simple question. You have to fill in the blank. So we call it this, that, or the other. Um, okay. But yeah, and it's all in two minutes and it's just fun questions. Um, another way for people to get to know you. Okay. You ready? I think so. All right, let's go. <laughs> Uh, the, the first one, we start light. We start easy. Okay. What are you currently reading? Atomic Habits. Okay. Happiest mistake you ever made? Ooh. 
That's a tough one. I don't know. I'm going to have to put that one at the end. Because <laughs> yes, I know the that's the second time I asked that people were like, Wait yes, a minute, they're, they're, I don't they're have it. too early to you. <laughs> I know. I'm okay. like, dang. All right. We're going we're gonna to go to some uh, NFL questions. What's the oldest stadium in the NFL? Oh, dang. And I can't even sit here. I'm like going through every stadium right now. I'm like, okay. I'll give you a hint. It's cold weather. Yeah, and it's in the... Very windy. Yeah, windy city. That's not Chicago, is it? Yeah. Soldier. Yeah, Soldier Field. Okay, Soldier Field. (laughs) Okay. 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 Loud neighbors or nosy neighbors? Loud neighbors. (laughs) You prefer to laugh? <laughs> yes, give me the, give me all the noise. If you're nosy, I'm like, get out my yard, please, leave me alone. Give me the give me the noise. I'm okay with that. Unless you're waking my yes. baby up, then I gotta go knock on your door or something. <laughs> Listen, I be watching too much true crime. Please be nosy. Please be nosy. How many? <laughs> Erica, thank you so much for coming on the show. We enjoyed you so much. If there's anyone that wants to get a hold of you, how do they mm-hmm. contact you or reach out to you? Um, well, my Instagram is Erica Donald 99. My okay. Twitter is Ari, E-R-I underscore Dawn, D-O-N 99. Um, LinkedIn, really just anything. I'm like, I would give my phone number an email. I feel like my husband always <laughs> just use do my it. phone number out all the time, but it's fine. <laughs> totally fine. It's like, I but, um, okay, but I'm- yeah, happy to connect and talk and all the things. Yes. I'll, I'll, um, drop links to all of her places that you can contact her in the show notes. All right. Thank you guys okay. for having me. Uh, I'm so thank appreciative. You. So. Man, what a fun time having Erica on. Listen, I don't, I don't know how she has been like managing it all. I know but she she serves and wearing a lot of hats. So she's she has. Awesome. But you know what I love? I love that she's been in the football world for so long. So she just yes. felt so comfortable being there. It's kind of what she majored in and went into when she just stayed in that realm. Um, mm-hmm. Because it takes a lot of people a lot of time to figure out what they want to do. So it's great that she figured that out. And it's Good kind of been there the whole way through. So. Yeah, and I, I'm also thoroughly impressed that she's sitting there going through schemes with him. Now, that's one thing to know what's going on, know what's out there, but to be low key testing him. And and we all know Aaron is a beast. So yes, real talk. <laughs> thoroughly impressed. There. For the latest on Inside Lines podcast, make sure to follow us on Inside Lines podcast on both Instagram and Facebook. And make sure to check out our website, InsideLinesPodcast.com, and leave us a voicemail. Leave, leave us your comments. If you have some ideas of guests you want to, um, you think we should have on or some career specific like women you want us on, then let us know. Um, speakpipe.com forward slash Inside Lines. Until then, leave it all out on the field. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye.